Alright everyone, today I want to go ahead and go over some survival boots. It's a concept I've been preaching to all my buddies for quite a while now. And I uh, figured I'd share it with y'all. See what y'all think. Let's go ahead and move to the side for a second. My theory is, I got my boots on every day, 24-7 pretty much. The only time my boots come off is when I'm going to bed. So, whatever's in my boots, I always have a survival situation if I needed it. So we can go ahead and go over the right boot first. I'll show you a couple little things. On the right side of my, the outside of my right boot, I've got a sheath I made for a Eco Hawk. It's a Tops Eco Hawk. You can see that. Pretty good, handy survival hawk head. So you split you a piece of wood, slip it down the center, tie it off, and you have an emergency hatchet. So that's always nice. I'm going to put this back in the boot sheath I made for it. I'll go back on the boot. Next we're going to go over on the little duck tails over here, little finger loop areas on the boots. I have a wet fire cube. Everybody knows how handy wet fire comes in. So, got a little wet fire cube here. Emergency situations. Pretty good stuff. I'm going to put this to the side. Usually on a regular basis, I will have these taped over with Gorilla tape or electrical tape to make sure they don't fall out. But for the video purposes, I decided to go ahead and take that off. Move this sheet back out of the way. On the inside of my boot, inside leg, made a little slit. And I got a couple things in here. A little nozzle for uh, super glue. One little one time use super glue. Another little one time use super glue. Pretty sure most of y'all know how handy super glue comes in, even on a survival situation on a regular basis. I've used a couple of them already. Also, I have one and two little cuts of JD Weld steel stick. It's the JB Weld putty form. Open it up. It's right here. Yes, the two mixtures are right there in the center. You meet it up with your fingers, and you got JB Weld. All right, this is the steel stick, the putty form. Uh, it fully cures in one hour. That beats what is it, five to seven hours in regular JB Weld mix. So I got two little setups of that right there. Let's go inside the boot. Go ahead and pull out my sole. Next, I have another sole. But this sole is made of duct tape and is completely lined with bank line. So, on this one, there's about 25 foot of bank line on here. I think I measured that right. Yeah, 25 foot of bank line on here. Just put the, the duct tape down and just follow the track all the way around. Nice little extra cushion. And 25 foot of bank line when you need. This is a number 48 bank line. So I believe it's 460 pound test. So good, comes in handy. Also underneath the sole, I have duct tape. This is 26 feet of duct tape, just over and over and over, nice flat surface, put it in the boot. After you walk on it for a bit, you see how it gets that nice molded form to it. First couple of hours of walking on it, a little uncomfortable. After that, it gets that nice form fit, never worry about it again. And that is it for this boot. Eventually, I want to go ahead and replace this with 550 cord. We'll see. Left boot. I have a backup knife, which I also took the handles off, so it has the tear holes through it. This way, I can use this as an emergency spearhead if needed. So, nice backup knife, solid, heavy duty, good weight to it. This is a Smith & Wesson HRT1. So I took the handles off so I could lash it, make a quick spear. 
there's no point in lashing a knife to a stick to use as a spear, and then has to unlash it and use it as a knife and back and forth. So I got my primary knife and my backup knife, also my spear head. Over here. Next, in the little finger loop area again, I have wrapped up in some toilet paper, just create a fire starter. Is if I can get to it, quite a bit of toilet paper apparently. A five times magnification lens. Toilet paper hips keeps it from scratching. And a five times magnification lens for starting fires. Everybody knows uh, five times is the minimum you want to use for starting a fire. You can probably do it with less. Recommend five times would be the least magnification you want to use to start a fire. Quick, easy, wraps up in its own fire starting tender. And it goes neatly back there in the little finger loop. So that's always nice. Again, usually I have these covered with tape. Video purposes, didn't have the tape on there. Also have this side cutting the little slot out. And got a little fire steel. Two magnesium rods and a ferrocenium rod. Nice fire steel set. This one is from Tops as well. I like it. Beats those big old brick. Magnesium rod fire still ones you see. Nice compact. Usually, I have some quadruple alt buck. Sorry, used to hunt. <laughs> some quadruple alt steel wool stuffed in here as well for a fire starter. Actually used it earlier when I was cleaning up one of my knives. Got to replace that. Haven't done it yet. So, if you don't know, quadruple alt steel wool is a great fire starter. You throw some sparks in there, lights up real quick. It's just nice embers. Start a nice fire using that. Alright, on the outside of my left boot, I got my first aid kit. I have two identical kits in here, along with alcohol pads. There's six alcohol pads right here. Everybody knows you can use these, they come in handy, especially in a first aid situation. Alcohol pads, one first aid kit, and Two first aid kits. Now my first aid kits are kind of stubborn. If it's something I need to go to the hospital for, that's what I'm gonna use my first aid kit for. If it's a little boo boo, rub some dirt on it, you'll be off, you'll be alright. You know, if it's something that I need a band-aid for, I want to cover it up and not get infected or you know, spread a rash or something, cut a piece of your shirt off, I got duct tape. Cover it up. We're good. These are for the big alleys that you would want to go to the hospital for, but necessarily can't get to in time. These are just wrapped up in some medical tape to hold it all together. Go ahead and undo one of these. Alright. First I got two things of antiseptic ointment. Pretty much your Neosporin. Two of those come in handy. Triple antibi antibiotic ointment. So those, I got two individual packets of wound sealer, also known as Quick Clot. You can get these at Walmart, Walgreens, they come in a pack of four. This is individual uses of wound sealer. Pour it in the wound, carterizes it, you're good to go. Alright? Don't use this if you don't know what you're doing. I also got ten butterfly bandages. I need stitches, I got wound sealer, I got antibiotic ointment, I got butterfly bandages, and duct tape. I should be good. We'll find out. But two of these in each pack come in handy. Also have three, I think these are a leave. Yep, three a leave in each one to help with fever reduction. Once you get wounded, your body's going to automatically go and get a fever. These will help with fever reduction and probably pain. You might have some pain if you need to use this medical kit. So that's the contents of one medical kit right there. Two identical ones with alcohol wipes are a must. All right. That's for the outside of the boot. Now let's go on to the inside. Again, let me remove my sole. That. Another ta-da, thank my soul, thank you. 
duct tape sole, string back bank line all the way around it, make a nice warm fit, nice good sole, another 25 foot of bank line right there for emergency use. That 50 foot of bank line total just in my boots comes in handy. Going a little deeper, and this is 18 foot of aluminum foil. Now, I like having aluminum foil because I usually don't carry a water bottle with me anymore. So, emergency situation, I can make a cup out of it, boil some water, make a platform out of it for cooking, make it an emergency blanket, shelter. There's a lot of uses for it. It's not quite as much as you would want for an emergency situation to do everything, make a nice shelter out of it. But 18 foot can be planning to make you a bowl to eat out of, make you a pot to boil your water, a cup to drink out of, a platform to cook. Aluminum foil comes in handy. 18 foot sits underneath the sole. That's the gist of my survival boots. So again, aluminum foil, boiling water, cooking, etc., etc., emergency blanket, keeping your heat in, sleeping surface, all that good stuff. Medical kit, alcohol pads. Wound sealer, powder wound sealer, anesthetic ointment, butterfly stitches, and a leaf, three leaves. I got two of those, two sets, identical sets of my medical kit. And I said I got about 22 foot of duct tape, fire rod with magnesium rod. 50 foot of bank line, emergency tomahawk, backup knife and spearhead, leave that there, wet fire tender, magnification limbs five times, with toilet paper, Two super glues and a super glue nozzle and cap. Yeah. And two things JD Weld still stick putty. I think I should be good if I only have my boots. But that's not including the rest of my stuff, the stuff I carry on my belt and my pockets and my wrists. There's a lot of extra stuff in there as well. But these are just my boots. I consider these my survival boots. So so I want to share this with y'all. Seems like it's a pretty good concept. I always got my boots. Never going to be without them. Might as well have a survival kit with them. You get used to the weight. After a couple of hours of walking around, don't even notice it. This is probably the first time this knife sheath and the tomahawk sheath has come off my boots. I leave them on, take my boots off, they're still there. So I just want to share this with you guys. Thanks for watching. Very much appreciated. Have a good day.